Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about wallpaper, and we'd like to thank Michael Bowl for liking and sharing the podcast. The first wallpaper was used as an inexpensive way to decorate walls, Mm -hmm. so people have been hanging these woven tapestries and fabric to give some color to their walls, but primarily in these really old homes, they were using it as an insulation for Mm. thin walls and to slow down drafts. Okay. And they've been doing this since the ancient Egyptians, Cindy. Wow. How and, about the Romans? And, and, and them too. Historians think that the first wallpaper was introduced into England in the 1400s. Hmm. And what's interesting, there's a group of museums called Historic New England, mm-hmm. and they have a collection of over 6,000 samples of wallpaper through history. Or you can go online to wallpaperhistory.org. <laughs> Some of the most popular types of wallpaper you're going to find at paint stores or home centers are vinyl, paper, non-woven, flock, and embossed. And the least expensive is going to be paper, although it can be difficult to work with because it's thin and it can tear easy. Mm -hmm. With vinyl wallpaper, it's much more durable and it's easy to hang without tearing. It's washable. It's good for high moisture areas like kitchens and bathrooms. And vinyl wallpaper can have a paper or a fabric backing. So if your walls aren't perfectly smooth, a fabric-backed vinyl wallpaper is going to show less imperfections, although it's a little more expensive. Non-woven is a blend of natural and synthetic fibers, and it's breathable, so it's going to eliminate mold and mildew from forming underneath the wallpaper. It's tear-resistant, easy to hang, washable, and it doesn't stretch. So when you're smoothing the seams, it's going to stay in place. It's going to make a very uniform look. That's nice. And they say it's easy to remove in full sheets when you're taking it down in the future. And this is becoming one of the more popular wallpapers. Mm-hmm. Flock wallpaper has a velvet-like raised pattern. On flock? Flock. So it's almost like little fuzzy stuff that's like embossed on mm. top of... And then embossed has raised and textured patterns. So flock and embossed are both kind of raised, but flock is fuzzy. <laughs> you can get foil wallpaper, and it's shiny. Foil? foil. Like aluminum? <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. These new foil wallpapers, just I mean, they shimmer, and there's a variety of styles. So they're pretty interesting Psychedelic. looking. Psychedelic? You can, yes, you can get bamboo. Bamboo. And it's actual bamboo. It, they can, it can be fake. Right. But you can get actual bamboo wallpaper. You can get grass cloth wallpaper. So this is real grass or vines. And they glue it to a backing. Oh, I'd like to see a or, room with all these in it. <laughs> or it can be a blend of natural and synthetic fibers. Mm-hmm. And then some of these, like the grass cloth, they say, can be very challenging to put up you because you need special <laughs> adhesives. <laughs> and then the colors, they say, can vary from roll to roll because it's grass. Right. And the seams can be hard to hide because it's... <laughs> yeah, <'cause- laughs> Yeah, it's hard to do with grass. <laughs> and what's wild is about some of these natural things is you may not be able to wash most of them. Yes. They, they say that you just you have to take a vacuum to your wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> there are acoustical wallpaper for home theaters, so it deadens the sound and it stops echoes. There are paintable wallpapers. So this is nice. If you like to redecorate a lot, mm-hmm. you can put up a wallpaper, you have a look, and then in a couple of years you can just paint right over it and change the color of it. (laughs) When you're looking at wallpaper, it's going to come peelable, strippable, and repositionable, or they'll call it peel and stick. Mm -hmm. With the strippable, most of that top layer and the backing can be pulled off and then scraped off. It's considered easier to remove than peelable. With the peelable, when you're removing it, that top layer is going to peel off and then it leaves most of the backing on the wall. That's a drag. So so you're going to have to use warm water chemicals to soften that backing and then scrape that off. Mm -hmm. With repositionable, this is just peel off a backing and it has an adhesive on it already and you just stick it to the wall. Oh, nice. So it's very easy to put up. And these are designed to peel off easily in the future without damaging the wall. And because that adhesive is designed to release easily... They say that it's probably not the best for, like, kids' rooms or anywhere where, you know, people are going to be bumping into it because if they're touching the seams a lot, it's, right. it's designed to peel off. But easy to hang. <laughs> Other than that peel and stick, wallpaper is going to come either unpasted or pre-pasted. Mm-hmm. With the unpasted, that's the most difficult to remove in the future. 
When you're purchasing your wallpaper, you're going to need to know the area being covered, so you're going to measure your length and width. You're going to subtract any area for doors and windows, and then depending on your pattern, you're going to check to see if you have a drop or repeat length on the label. What does that mean? So if you have a pattern on it, and as you line up each sheet next to each other, this is the amount that you're going to have to drop the wallpaper so that the pattern matches at the seam, oh. and, and it really varies. Look at the square feet of the roll, and a common size in the U.S. is about 57 square feet, so it's 20.5 inches wide and 33 feet long. Mm -hmm. If you have a repeat or a drop up to 6 inches, you're only going to get about 50 square feet of usable wallpaper. Wow, that's a big difference. <laughs> really? It, well, a, a drop of 7 to 12 inches, only 44 square feet is going to be usable. Hmm. 13 to 18, 40 square feet. And if you have anywhere from a 19 inch to a 23 inch drop out of that 57 square feet there's only 36 square feet that's usable <laughs> and so you have to cut it uh, yeah if the pattern is a straight match or random match you're going to have very little waste in comparison you're just trimming the top the bottom and the corners and the sheets are just butting up to each other without having to match the pattern mm -hmm. random is the easiest to install and the pros are recommending add 10 to 15 percent extra to your measurements when buying or just grab a couple extra rolls and then return the unopened rolls make sure you're keeping your receipts mm -hmm. and then check the lot number or run number on the label to have the colors match the best the most common wallpaper for homeowners is pre-pasted so all you have to do is get the backing wet to activate the adhesive if you're using a wallpaper paste, you want to make sure you're checking the label and match the recommendations to the backing and the wallpaper material. And with this type of adhesive, you can get a dry that you're going to mix in water yourself, or you can already get it pre-mixed. Mm -hmm. Before you put up your wallpaper, you want to fill any cracks and holes. And once that compound is dry, make sure you prime over it. Test your paint. So you want to take a damp sponge and hold it against the wall for about 30 seconds, and then rub it really hard. If any paint comes off, you need to prime it. Yeah. If no paint comes off, then it's going to stand up under the adhesive of your wallpaper. And some pros are recommending use a wallpaper primer on the walls first, and hmm. then down the road it's going to be much easier to remove that wallpaper. When you're planning to hang your wallpaper, I would look at the layout. If you have a design on the paper and you have a focal point in your room, let's say you have a fireplace and you have a wild looking design on your paper, you'd want to center that right over the fireplace for the best look. And then also look at how it looks from the top of the ceiling because you might want to start it dropping it down so that you have the design with the best look. And now you're going to work out from that point left and right of it. Okay. If you don't have a focal point, you need you're, to make one. You, you, well, you're going to start in a corner. Mm -hmm. So you want to wrap about a half an inch of that wallpaper onto the adjoining wall. If you're in the U.S. and you have wallpaper that's 20.5 inches wide, I would start in the corner, measure out 20 inches, use a level, and get a vertical line with a pencil. You're going to have that 20 inches on the main wall, that half inch on the adjoining wall, and then on the adjoining wall, when you put paper on that, you're actually going to put it right over that half inch mm. that you wrapped over. And what you want to do is, especially if it's vinyl over vinyl, if you use an adhesive designed for vinyl, and some of these come in a little squeeze tube, you're going to put just a thin bead of that, and that way it's going to stick really well in the corners. Mm -hmm. And then read the label. Some wallpaper recommend that you use adhesives when you overlap. Some of them say you don't have to. On your outside corners, you're going to use that same technique of overlapping about a half an inch. That way you're going to get a really nice looking corner. And then when you're cutting your sheets to put up on the wall, you want to give yourself about an inch extra on the top and the bottom. That way it's easy to tuck in the corners and then cut it to size. Hmm. You want to remove the wall plate covers from switches and outlets. And when you're working around the boxes, you can turn off the power to prevent a shock hazard. If you're using a pre-pasted wallpaper, you're going to be submerging this into a trough filled with about two-thirds warm water. Hmm. You're going to measure and cut the length of wallpaper. You're going to roll it up with the backing on the outside, and then you're going to drop it into this and let it soak for about 30 seconds. Again, check your label. You're going to lift it up and out by the top edge, so this is good to have a ladder. <laughs> and you're going to let that excess water drop off into the trough and then have an area that's clean that you can lay out these sheets. You're going to lay it out face down. You're going to fold it in half, backing to backing. 
So take half of the section, fold it to the center, so the back to the back, right. and then the other half to the center, and make sure you're not creasing the ends, and they call this booking, and okay. you're going you're gonna to let this set, so adhesive against adhesive for about five minutes, but double check your instructions, and then put down some drop cloths in yes. the areas that you're working, <laughs> and cloth is the best. <laughs> If this is your first time putting up wallpaper, you want Good to luck. you want you want to start from the least conspicuous corner. You want to have a step stool that's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Wide steps are nice. <laughs> You're going to lift up the paper. You want about an inch extra at the ceiling and align to your plumb line. And then you're going to be holding this. Use a wallpaper smoothing tool and there's a, a few different types. You're gently going to press the upper half of the wallpaper in place. You're overlapping about a half an inch onto the adjoining wall if you're starting in a corner. And you don't want to use too much pressure at first. Some of these wallpapers are going to stretch mm -hmm. and then they shrink as the water evaporates and it can cause the seams to open up. <laughs> then you're going to work the bottom half to the wall. After that you're going to smooth lightly over the whole sheet. You want to work out the large bubbles but you don't want to overstretch the wallpaper. You then want to use a putty knife or a straight edge along the ceiling or baseboard to trim the excess paper with a utility knife and you're going to need lots of extra blades to keep <laughs> a sharp edge and spend the money for extra blades because you don't want to tear that paper. That's a lot of work to tear it though. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're only overlapping in corners inside and outside by that half an inch. You never want to overlap the vertical seams. You're just going to butt those sheets up to each other mm -hmm. and that way you're going to get just a, a perfectly seamless look. Some wallpaper, they want you to wipe the whole area down with a damp sponge, but check the installation instructions. For unpasted wallpaper, you're going to lay your sheets out and then apply the recommended paste to half of it. Then you're going to fold it over on itself to the center. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to paste the other half and fold it back, and that's, you're going to let that book, usually about 10 minutes with unpasted or whatever's recommended. And with some wallpaper, like non-woven, mm -hmm. you can roll the adhesive on the wall with a roller, like a paint roller, oh, that and then just much easier. <laughs> yeah, and then just hang it. But follow the instructions on your product. To remove old wallpaper, every job is going to be different. So the glue they use, the type of wallpaper, the wall condition before they hung it. How long it's and, been up? Yeah, yeah. Some are just a bear, man. Mm -hmm. Some it just, I mean, you're going to end up doing a lot of drywall work because, I mean, <laughs> it'll just tear the face off the drywall. But you want to start in a corner or a seam and try to pull as much as you can. Some are going to pull away with very little left on the wall, so it's going to be relatively easy. Mm -hmm. Some wallpaper, the face will peel off, leaving the backing, and then you're going to have to get that wet, either with water or a chemical, and then scrape it. And then some, just it, it's just not going to come off. It's just... Ever. <laughs> It's just here. Place a drywall. So if you have wallpaper that won't come off easily, what you can use is a wallpaper tool. So Zinsser has something called the Paper Tiger, mm -hmm. and the Z I N S S E R. Piranha has a scoring tool, and Hide Tools has a scoring tool. And these are handheld tools with multiple small scoring wheels. And as you run this over the face of the wallpaper. It's creating hundreds of these small little cuts, right. and this allows water or chemicals to get behind the wallpaper. And you want to make sure you don't press too hard because you don't want to do damage to the drywall. Hmm. So once you have all these holes in the face of the wallpaper, you can try warm water in a spray bottle and then just spray a section at a time, let it set, and then try to pull the paper off or scrape the seams. If the water doesn't work, many of the pros are suggesting hot water 50-50 with unscented fabric softener and a lot of these guys were saying that fabric softener does an amazing job. How'd they at, figure at, that out? <laughs> I don't know but they say it breaks down the <laughs> adhesive very well. Wait about 15 minutes and then try to pull and scrape off the wallpaper. If that doesn't work there's a bunch of chemicals to break down the adhesives. There's liquids, there's gels. Mm -hmm. A couple of the top rated. Zinzer has the Diff D-I-F Ultra there's something called Chomp, C-H-O-M-P, and then Roman Piranha. And then you can also get a steamer if you've got a, if you've got a big house and a mm -hmm. lot of wallpaper and you've got to remove a lot, then you can either rent it or buy an inexpensive steamer mm -hmm. and just work a section at a time, and it does a nice job. And I would perforate it with one of those tools first. Right. You're going to want drop cloths when you're removing your wallpaper and be careful around electric boxes. Turn off the power when you're soaking or getting any area wet near switches and outlets. 
you want to remove all the paste thoroughly before you repaint. So once you've scraped off the paper, I would really wash the wall down and right. rinse it very well before repainting. And a wet dry vac really comes in handy for picking up wet paper. And then depending on the old adhesive and the scrapers you use, one tip with a scraper if you're using metal scrapers is take a grinder and round off the edges or put duct tape on the edges because a lot of times when you're scraping, those edges are really sharp. Mm -hmm. And if you move your wrist at all, you can jam that corner into gouge. the dry, gouge it. And then you're going to and be prepared that you probably are going to have to do some drywall repair <laughs> if you're removing, especially old some of the old pasted wallpapers. Mm -hmm. When you're wallpapering, make sure you keep some extra wallpaper for repairs. So if you have a tear or you get a tear down the road, what you can use is a section of that extra wallpaper. So let's say we have a tear. You're going to create a patch about an inch or so wider than the tear. You're going to hold this patch over the tear, and now you're going to use a sharp utility knife, and you want to cut through the patch and the existing wallpaper to create a unique shape. Okay. So so you're not using you know you're not using let's say a square of right. of wallpaper and just trying to match that. You actually want to cut inside the edge of your patch, cutting through that and the original wallpaper at the same time. When you pull that away, you're going to peel off the wallpaper from the wall, your original wallpaper. Right. And that patch that you cut through, now you have a perfect shaped Patch. Wow, that's and, genius. And you want to you want to make it look like an amoeba shape too. <laughs> right. You don't want a square or a circle mm -hmm. because it's too easy to see it. And then you want to use some type of paste, or if you had a pre-pasted, you're going to wet that and put it over and use either a seam roller or they have these wallpaper tools that are kind of fuzzy. They're very soft, mm -hmm. and you can just use that to kind of work it in place. But it, it turns out really nice. Cool. There's some really cool wallpapers you can get. There's With out, grass clippings? There's, besides grass, <laughs> there's outdoor wallpaper. For what? For outdoors. There's, well, what, what are you going to outdoor? So if you've, got, you know, if you've got a really nice home and you've got partition walls, or let's say you have an area where you have a built-in grill and you've got outside decor, you can put wallpaper outside. So like Cindy. your fence? Yeah. <laughs> no, on a wall outside. Or if you, if you have a shed? <laughs> You have a wallpaper on that? Go online and look at outdoor <laughs> wallpaper. You'll oh, man, see some cool design. Have to. You can get LED wallpaper. So it has hundreds of LEDs <laughs> uh, on the thing. So some of these, they say, create enough light. You don't need any light. You just turn on your wallpaper. <laughs> and that, that's space is that, age. Is that indoor or outdoor? <laughs> this is indoor. <laughs> you can get scented wallpaper. Ugh. So you can get wallpaper that has like pictures of bananas or cherries. And, and what, you go and scratch it, and then it and smells no, like... No, it just smells like it all the time. You don't even have to scratch it. So you can go to flavorpaper.com, and you can see some of those. For the LED wallpaper, you can go to architects-paper.com mm -hmm. and check that out. You can get wall murals. So some of these are amazing. So you can take one wall, and they have a mural that looks like bookshelves or like a huge guitar. You can get some, some of these designs that look like pop art or mm -hmm. comic strips. So it's, so it's really interesting looking. Graffiti. <laughs> you can have world maps. My and grandparents really loved wallpaper. So down in their basement, they had, so behind the TV, and it was uh, a picture of like the ocean okay. hitting the rocks. So and that was wallpaper. Was, right, right. Rather cool. than putting up pictures. Yeah. And then upstairs in their fancy living room that nobody ever went in, they had wallpaper. And my grandfather did such a great job. So it was that flock right. wallpaper. Fuzzy. So it was white, and then there was a red pattern on it. So the pattern, I mean, it was crazy, but that was red and fuzzy. Right. So it went up the stairs, so there was like certain areas where it was like smooth. Right. But he did such a great job that there was a bifold closet door that okay. he wallpapered that, ah, too. That's funny. So, but that was, <laughs> yeah, the red and white worm yeah. that nobody went in. That's, that's great. <laughs> and then there's something called liquid wallpaper. What is that? So it's called silk plaster, and this is... It's colored fibers that you add to warm water. You mix it by hand, and then it has to set, like, like for a lot of hours. Many of these, they say, let it set overnight. And the adhesives are in there on these fibers, and you trowel it onto the wall, and it creates this unique design. 
So they say it insulates, it absorbs sound, it's breathable, there's no static, it doesn't collect dust or dirt. You can patch it easily if somebody scrapes against it, and then it will cover small cracks and imperfections, and it goes over most material if it's primed. So you can put this over drywall, plaster, metal, or wood. Wow, I'm going to so have to look this up Yeah, now. silk plaster, very interesting Why didn't looking. you show it to me when you, when you found it? <laughs> Google. <laughs> What are some top rated wallpaper companies? So in the home centers, York, Brewster, and Graham and Brown were the top rated. And at Graham and Brown, they have a lot of those big murals. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to add? If you're shopping online, I would look at the specifications of the wallpaper. Is it moisture resistant, scrubbable, or washable, paintable? The type of material, the pattern drops. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you're really looking at what it is. The pre-pasted vinyl and the non-woven are the easiest to hang and remove. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play Music app, and iHeartRadio. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our books, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.